Hello and welcome to Chair Interval Training, brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs Channel 5 and the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and me, Lynn Hardman, a certified Silver Sneakers Flex Instructor. I love Silver Sneakers, but you don't need to have Silver Sneakers coverage and you don't need to be a senior to benefit from exercise. For this 60 minute chair interval training class, all you really need is your body and a sturdy chair. But consult your doctor before beginning this or any exercise program. And if you feel dizzy, wobbly, or just like you need to sit down, you're right. You can remain seated for the entire program, or if you're feeling strong enough, you can exercise on your feet or in your seat. Just have fun. Okay, so here's what we'll need. Uh, a sturdy chair, enough room to move around it. Always stay close enough to use it as your balance check. If you have a little rubber ball that you can hold in one hand, that would be great. If not, it's okay. A latex or non-latex stretchy band or tubing. This one had to go to the hospital. I have some loaner kits, so I'm in the red book. If you would like to have a ball and a tube, you can call me, all right? And I'm going to cue up some music because music makes it a little bit funner to move our bodies. There you go. Let's see. We're going to start standing, but just so you know, if you're seated, you can march it out or rock your body side to side. And whether you're seated or standing, we're going to use our best posture. So this makes more room for our lungs to do their job so we can breathe better and it makes it easier to move. And that's the goal of this class is to make your movements easier. And we're going to use a scale of 1 to 10 to check on our perceived exertion because how you're feeling is spot on. We're also going to use the talk test. So I'm going to ask you to speak out. I'll be listening virtually. Okay, so on our perceived exertion, one would be the lowest intensity and ten would be the highest. We are shooting for a perceived exertion of four to about seven. Eight is great, but you've got to slow down when you get to there. All right? Now, you can keep moving in your chair, but note, when you're marching in your chair, these muscles on top and the fronts of the thighs get a little tired, so you'll have to be creative and pull your heels back sometimes. But just pay attention to your body. It's always right. It'll tell you things if you're listening. All right, I'm going to stand up. You can remain seated the whole time if you feel like that's the place for you to be right. Good, it feels great to move. So, I'm going to ask you right now, how do you feel on that perceived exertion scale? One, okay, I'm good to go. I could run a marathon. Or 10, oh, I feel like I just ran a marathon. I need to sit down and I can't even talk. Wherever you are on that scale, just do your best to keep moving. You can always reduce the range of motion of exercises or go back to the last thing that felt good to you. Use your best posture and keep breathing. Okay, if you felt like that too, I'll bet you by the end of this session, you're gonna probably feel a little bit better mood-wise. That's the most immediate and wonderful effect of exercise. And also, you'll get more limbered up, more flexible. Let's just rock, pushing into the balls of the feet. Strong feet, strong bodies. Strengthen our immune system, but strong feet specifically help our balance. You must wear good, supportive, flexible soled, strong heel cup shoes for this exercise program. Especially if you're diabetic. Roll those shoulders and if nothing hurts, make it bigger. Whoops, watch out for your chair. <laughs> okay, open and close your chest. 
Very nice. I hope you're feeling good. The days are getting longer. And when we're exercising, we're getting stronger. So keep up the good work. Excellent. March it out. We are going to work on the ABCs. A is for agility, the ability to move our feet fast. Because research shows if we are agile, we are less, less apt to have a fall. That's important. So, the B is for balance because if our balance is good, we're less apt to have a fall. And C is for coordination because if we're more coordinated, guess what? That also lowers our risk for a fall. We're going to keep um, warming up, but we're going to move carefully to the front of our chair and line our heels up with the chair. I'll talk about risk versus benefits a lot. Our exercise program, the benefits must always outweigh the risks. And that's true of how we deal with this coronavirus too. All right, when your heels are close to your chair and a nice wide base, your risk of falling and hurting yourself is reduced. Because if you're starting to sit down and your knee buckles, then there you are, right in your chair, safely. But we'll talk more about how to sit down and get back up, otherwise known as squatting a lot today. Now that we're in the chair, sit at the edge of your seat, because I'm so excited to be here with you today, virtually. <laughs> we could be together even though we're alone. Sitting tall, buckle up your safety belt, stretch out your right leg, Stretch out your left leg. Pick your toes, point them to the ceiling. And let's do the same side arm as that leg. And just point. Sit tall. Put an imaginary glass of water on each shoulder, as I said last week. Ah, and breathe. Just keep moving, keep breathing. Do your best, and whenever you need to, take a rest. All right, if it feels good, squeeze those long, strong quadricep leg muscles and point your toe in the air. Woo. Pull your navel in. You've got this. I'm pointing at you. You know who you are. And you know how it feels, so pay attention to your body. All right, we're going slow enough we could articulate or flex at the ankle with a point flex point. Feet and ankles are really important. There's 26 bones down there in your feet. And over 30 muscles. We need to keep them strong and flexible for better balance. I'm getting tired of this, how about you? You know you can stop whenever you want to, but let's stretch out a little bit. Just a preparatory stretch. Sitting tall, we can use our lap as a stable table to support our long, strong spine. Now, if your shoulder doesn't like that, you can bring it in and soothe it, but keep your spine long and strong. As you hinge forward, maybe halfway towards your lap, maybe you can think of going over a hurdle like Edwin C. Moses. Lifting those toes and fingers to develop the stretch. Woo! And then point the toe like you're stepping on the gas. Sit tall, pull your belly button towards your spine to support it. And if it feels good, draw the knee closer to the chest and draw circles with your ankle in one direction and then the other. Excellent. Knees up to your sitting position. And let's stretch out that left leg. Supporting once again on the thigh. Pulling the navel in. Lengthening our torso as we bow only halfway towards our back. Keeping our chins up, right? Reach like you're going over that hurdle. And then lift your toes and your fingers. You can spread them wide and then push them down. These joints, wrists, and ankles are very important for our act 
activities of daily living and balance. Hold that navel in, lean back into your seat back. Draw the knee closer to the chest and draw those ankle circles again. And the other direction. Excellent. Sitting tall. Take a deep breath and let's open our chest. Ah, just like you yawn and greet the day. And exhale as you interlace your fingers and push away all the stuff you don't need right now. Let's pay attention to you. You know, taking good care of your health is a gift you give yourself right now. Okay, so have fun, keep moving, go at your own pace. We're about to embark on our first little 10 minute segment of aerobic activity. The most important muscle in your body to strengthen is your heart. So, 10 minutes is a good length of time to shoot for, but if you have to return to your chair or remain in your chair, you're right. All right, we're gonna do a little pattern that I call, um, well, here's what it sounds like. It sounds like this. Slow, 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 quick, 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 slow, 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 quick, quick, quick. It looks like this. Quick, quick, quick. Are you doing it in your chair? Quick, quick, quick. Or are you already in the air? Wherever you are, do your best. Pull that navel in. And breathe. So this is the pattern. We're going to play around with it, and it should be fun. If it's not, if anything's hurting at all, make it smaller or go back to the last thing you did that felt good to you. Got it? Good. All right, I'm going to transition to the air, and we're going to move for about nine more minutes. Get those hips back, heads up, and as you come up, squeeze your hips forward. If you feel dizzy at any time, please get safely back in your chair. If you are standing, let's come to the right side of our chair so we can lift those knees without whacking the chair. Best posture. Pull your navel in. Put those glasses of water on there. And let's do a little knee lift on the right. And then march. And three on the left and march. So it's up, 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 down, 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 or slow, 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 quick, quick, quick. Now you've got your chair always within your peripheral visual field and always within your reach. So don't go marching away from your chair. It's your assistive device. It's my assistive device. And I'm going to need it sometimes. Okay, so if you don't need it, you know it's right there where you can touch it, or you can tap your toe down. Those are two ways we have of checking our balance. But let's play a little game with this to challenge ourselves a little bit more. We're going to draw little tiny circles with that leg. Ooh, little circles. I'm drawing mine away from the midline. You just got to mess that up. Three, two, one, march, two, three, three, two, one. Pull that navel in. This is hard work. How are you doing? Good, I hope. Now, we're drawing them away from the midline, perhaps. When we get over to the right, let's try to draw that circle toward the midline. Ooh. Coordination challenge. I messed up again. Sorry. <laughs> March two, three. You got it. Stay with me. March two, three. Any moving is better than no moving. But nothing should hurt. How about one more each side? Woo. March two, three. How are you feeling on that perceived exertion? One being, okay, I could run a marathon, and 10 being, felt like I just did one. Oof. Do I hear five, six, seven? If you're at eight, nine, 10, please have a seat or bring it in. If you're feeling fine, we're behind our chair now, and we're gonna do that same pattern. 
Only, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Only we're gonna do it with a nice wide hip width or chair width stance. Able to touch the chair, nothing under our feet, but we're gonna start with a fundamental little mini squat. And instead of a knee lift, our up two three is gonna be a hamstring curl on the right. Up two three, I'll get it, you guys. Up two three, down two three, slow, 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 quick, quick, quick. Oh, thank goodness, I've got it. <laughs> so I've got that chair where I can reach it. I can also tap my toe down if I need. You too. Lift, 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 open your chest. Up, up, up. If you want to make this really big, you could row. Ooh, that's hard. You could row with one arm, so you keep that other hand close to your balance check. Three, two, one. This is challenging. But it's safe because we have our assistive device, because we're warmed up gradually. And we know whenever we want to, whenever we don't feel like it's right for us, we can put our foot down, just like that. Okay, how are you doing on the perceived one to 10 scale now? We're gonna to transition to some strength work. So take your time. And once we're safely in our chair, we're going to get a sip of water. By the way, don't wait for me to tell you you're thirsty. If you're thirsty, you know it. But do mindfully line your heels up so that they actually touch or almost touch your chair legs on the front. That way, with your weight evenly distributed, as you hinge your hips back and keep your chin up, if you lose your balance, you're going to land right on that seat. And to that matter, you might want to have a little cushion on there. It just makes things a little more comfortable. Your exercise at times may feel slightly uncomfortable, but it should never ever hurt. If you have sharp, sudden shooting pain, by all means stop. Soothe your body. And when you're ready, after you've done a few squats, it's seated. Woo! I am thirsty. When we're getting things down low, whether it's for an exercise class or out in your garden, anywhere in your home, take your time. Step to the side. Be mindful. Lean to the side as you support. And that habit is a good one to help protect your lower back. Here's to your help. Cheers. We are going to use our tubing. This is a little bit tricky to get set up for, and it's different than what we did last week. So, take your tubing, sit really close to the edge of your chair, Hold it like it's a big smile. Step on it with both feet. It should be about equal length of tubing on the outside of each knee. And you want the tube to go right under the skinniest part of your shoe. By the way, check your shoes. If they have little rocks in there, um, that could cut the tubing and make it snap and you don't want that to happen. All right, now. We're going to do some hip abduction. So sit as tall as you can. That's the outer hip muscles. Really important for our balance. Sit tall at the edge of your seat so that you can keep your foot really close to the ground. And step out to the right and see how that feels. If that felt easy, step out to the left. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put X marks the spot. We're going to take the tubing and cross it. Pass it to the opposite hand so that you have an X on the fronts of your shins. Put a little tension on that, sit tall, rest your shoulders and your back pockets. With this configuration, it's gonna take us right to our next exercise. So let's take our time, set it up right. Keep your knees right on top of your toes. Don't let them go inward. Keep them open right on top of the ankle and step out to the right. How's that feel? 
Step out to the left. Oh, that second step was a doozy. Step in to your neutral stance. Now with your left knee, out, out. We used this pattern last week for agility, but this week we're using it for strength, so we're not trying to go fast. We're trying to control the two and keep our torso tall and breathe. And as we do this movement, it should be challenging, but it shouldn't hurt. And towards the end of a minute, maybe 30 seconds, you'll begin to feel some dull, achy burning in the side of your hips. That means you're almost to the point of failure. And guess what? With strength training, momentary failure, I like to call fatigue, is success. That's the goal. We're trying to tire out our muscles so that the next time with rest and hydration and good nutrition, we'll be able to do it stronger, longer. We might need to be stronger for a good bit longer, huh? Don't worry, we're in this together. Okay, feet neutral. Let's do another hip strengthener. Remember, breathe with these. Shoulders in your back pockets, rest your hands on your laps. This one is going to be external rotation. So open your knees like the pages of a good book. Ooh, are you reading any good books right now? My favorite books are like nonfiction with lots of graphs and charts and ooh, National Geographic. That's, that's my kind of reading. <laughs> this is a good time to catch up on some reading, yeah? As long as you balance it with some activity. All right, let's exhale as we open the knees like the pages of that best book you're reading. Roll the feet to the outsides of the shoe, strengthening your ankles. I've had a lot of little athletic injuries in my life. Because I'm human, we're all human. And a sprained ankle was the worst pain of all the injuries I've ever had. Including, um, well, it wasn't an injury, it was a blessing, including the birth of three children. <laughs> okay, all right, let's move on to our upper body. Bring those handles to the middle of your knees. Please, widen your stance, and bring your hands close to your belly. When you do this, inhale as if you're yawning to breathe the beautiful day. Put those shoulders in your back pockets, and lift, keeping the hands close to the body. We're only going to go from approximately our abdomen to our shoulders, keeping the hands tracing along your body. The further your hand gets away from your body, the harder it is on the shoulder. We're strengthening the shoulder. That's the benefit. We're reducing the risks by keeping our hands close to our body. Now, if you want to progress this, you can move your feet further away. Inhale, exhale, repeat until you feel like you've reached that momentary muscular fatigue. Good. You can even lean back. So you're doing this row, this upright row, with even more length between your feet and your shoulders, where we anchor the band. Okay, relax. Sit up tall. Bring your feet in. Remove any tension on your tube before you step off. We're going to do one more little exercise here, seated. That upright row, by the way, is how you lift really heavy objects, keeping them close to your body, or just ask for someone to help you. <laughs> All right, let's use our ball. We're going to work on peripheral vision. Studies show that Having good peripheral vision helps our hand-eye-foot reaction time and it helps us reduce our risk of having any kind of an accident, whether we're driving or walking or just puttering around our house. I've been puttering a lot. All right, but we can do some things here safely at home to make us stronger. This one is a hand-eye reaction and a peripheral visual game sitting at the edge of your seat because it's exciting to learn new games. Focus your eyes on a point across the wall of the room and keep them there. And we're going to try our best to 
toss that ball, not looking at it. Sometimes we're so visually dominant that our eyes cheat and they, they look at the ball. But keep your eyes laser focused on that point off in the distance. You know what I'm focused on? I know it's way off in the distance, but I'm focused on getting back together with some of my friends and family and playing some of the other ball games I like. All right, if that's easy for you, let's make it a little bit more challenging. Now, promise me, if your ball gets away, do not jump out of your chair and rush. Take your time. But you might want to move your Tiffany lamp and your expensive crystal. <laughs> okay, see how it feels to look gently, slowly to the right, keeping your spine tall, and then gently, slowly to the left. Just your own safe, comfortable range of motion. That feels okay. Let's try that same game. Look at that point across the room and keep your eyes focused on the distance as you toss your ball. And then look slightly to the right. Ooh, that makes it hard because the ball's on the edge of our peripheral visual field. Bring your gaze all the way around and try it to the left. That's hard. Little ball games that are safe, where the risk is very low, can benefit you greatly. Learning to juggle in a safe space with some little um, bean bags. I bet you have the materials to make some at home. You can do that, and it'd be a very good brain exercise, as well as hand-eye coordination and peripheral vision. Okay, lecture this and that. Let's move some more. But before we do, let's get a sip of water. Do I sound like a broken record yet? Step to the side. Lean to the side. Support your body, your arm, and your strong abdominals. <sighs> Hydration equals happiness. I have a little chalkboard in front of my house. And I've been putting little messages on it. The wind and the rain keep blowing it down and wiping it out. But the last one was, happiness is social distancing. <laughs> because we are flattening that curve. So stay strong. We've got this. All right, here's another pattern. This is a little tricky, so I'll show you in the chair. And you know you can get benefit in your chair. Sitting at the edge of your seat, that's posture. Let's take our right leg and just march it out, shall we? You can always say no. Good, just breathing. Okay, this pattern is called rock step. Rock out! Okay, well, here's what it looks like. We're going to take that right foot, right foot, and rock it forward just a little bit. I'm marching to left. And then we can march it to the side for four, three. You can count with me, too, if you want to. One, and then we can rock it to the back. Back. Just a little step. Three more. Two more. You can pump your arms. To the side again. Four. Three. Keep that torso tall. Two. Now we've been doing it slow. Let's try it faster. Forward. 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 This is hard. Forward. Forward. Now to the side. 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 Get it? that in our chair. And you know what? I can get a benefit there. But if you feel froggy enough and safe and you can talk and you're in that four to seven perceived exertion range, then you're ready to do it on your feet. Before you stand, dig your heels in. Get your head up. Be smart. Be conscious. And if anything feels wrong, promise me you'll sit back down. Yeah and call somebody. All right, push your hips forward. Ooh. We're going to be on the left side of our chair since we just previewed it on the right. And remember, if these muscles get tired, it's okay to take a break. Your body knows best. Best posture. Keep the chair in your hip pocket. There you go. Keep it in your peripheral visual field. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get that left foot marching, whether we're doing it little or big. You can use your arms or not. It's up to you. Just 
Just don't march away from your chair. We're going to do that rock step, forward, side, and back, four times in each direction at tempo. And then we're going to try it fast. Here we go, forward for four, three, two, one, to the side, out, together, out. A little mini squat there if you like. Good. To the back. Not too big of a step. Keep that chair where you can touch it. Good. To the side. Four at tempo. Three. Get ready to go a little faster. To the front for eight counts. Here we go. Eight. Seven. You got it? Four. Three. To the side now. Eight. Seven. Keep your feet moving. You got this. Keep breathing. To the back. Eight. Seven. This is hard. <laughs> Four. Three. Two. To the side. Last eight. Fast feet. How you doing? I can't hear you. Marching out, please. Woo. Let's take a little balance breather here. Ah, very good. With this um, balance breather, we're going to move slowly, very mindfully, but we're going to be at arm's length away from our chair over here on the left, and we're going to walk the tightrope two steps only. So imagine you're on a balance beam, and you're going to go heel to toe, that's one, heel to toe, that's two, stop right there, take a breather as you lift your toe, keep your spine tall. With that imaginary glass of water on your shoulder, keep that chair in your hip pocket in your hand and take two steps back. Toe to heel, toe to heel. How are you feeling? Do you feel like doing that little agility rock step pattern over here on the left, on the right? If you feel like you could do this for five more minutes, you're fine. If you can only go another 30 seconds, maybe you should sit down and do it there. We're going to catch up with you. Okay, so standing tall on the left side of your chair. I'm sorry, this is the right. <laughs> Keep that chair in your hip pocket. Best posture, best attitude. And let's get that right foot moving together. Hmm. Right foot, right, 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 left, right. I think I got it. Let's rock it forward at tempo together. Three, together. Two, together. One, and to the side. Four, together. Three, you can use both arms, just don't move too far away from that chair. To the back, rock together. Back, together. How are you doing? I miss you. To the side, four, three, Two, we'll see each other. When it's safe, fast feet. Forward, forward. How many more? Four, three, two. Count with me to the side. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. To the back. Count with me. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Woo! Eight to the side. We're almost there. How are you doing? Four more. Three, two, one. Woo! That was hard. <laughs> Take a deep breath. We're going to do that little tightrope balancing act safely. So you got to start an arm length away from the chair and only take two steps. That way you don't get too far ahead of it where you can't see it or touch it. All right. Pull your belly button in. And float that right foot. See if you can step on a tightrope, keeping your hand near that chair. Two steps, stop. Lift your toe, keep your leg straight, and swing your leg through to the back, and through to the front. And then we're gonna go just two steps to the back, touch your chair. Yay! Take a bow. <laughs> Time to return to our chair for a strength interval. Squats. 
They're very important. Maybe your knees and your hips don't like them, but even if you can just line your heels up close to the chair, it's not going to scoot. You've got a pad there. Do your very best to just sit down slow with your weight equal in both your right and your left leg. Now, if you can do 10 of these, more power to you. And how do we generate power? With speed, but only on the way up, and only if it doesn't hurt. Down, slow, and control, up. Did you know physical therapists use this sit to stand test? They time you for 30 seconds to see, I think it's 30 seconds, to see how many you can do, and by that they determine your risk of falls. So squatting is a great way to reduce your risk of fall. With your hands on your shoulders, it's harder, isn't it? If you were holding a five pound weight on each hand, keeping those weights close to your body, it'd be even harder. But you have to do things gradually. We get strong gradually. Just like we're going to get out of this coronavirus thing. It's going to be gradual, and it's going to be mindful. And it's going to take some work, just like exercise. So let's let's stay healthy, let's stay hydrated. Pull your navel in, step the side, lean to the side. Hydration. Did you ever get leg cramps or muscle cramps, particularly at night? Staying hydrated is a good way to reduce the risk of having leg cramps. All right, we're going to transition to another series of strength exercises. These ones are going to work in diagonals because life doesn't just come at you in one direction or one speed. So these are functional exercises that I hope you have fun with. Put the fun in function. And if anything hurts, you can modify or just skip it. That's okay. We're going to use that band again. And by the way, as I said at the beginning, I have about 10 more of these kits that I would be happy if you call me. I'm in the Red Book, Lynn Hartman. I will bring it to you, sterilized in a little bag and wave at you with my rubber gloves and mask from a good distance of 12 feet or more. <laughs> All right, but we're gonna do some chops, or I like to call them hay balers. So, we're gonna take the tubing, hold it like a big smile, and we're gonna step on the middle of it with our right foot, the skinniest part, and bring the handles together on the inside of that right leg. Bring the handles close to you. You can have your hand your right hand in front, like that, wrist nice and straight, and the other hand, like that, sort of like you would hold a baseball bat or, or a two-handed uh, backhand in tennis, or an axe, and you chop wood. And we're going to pull that navel in, keep the hands close to the body, and see how it feels to push up in a diagonal, just a little it close to our body's plane, like this is an imaginary curtain. We're going to stay behind that imaginary curtain with our chop. Now this is an all body exercise, so pull your navel in and try to rotate while you keep your spine strong and tall. I don't recommend standing up with this one because it's just going to be so hard. If it's too hard, you can take one of those two handles and just put it down. Grab the other one with both hands, put some weight on that. We don't want it to come scooching up. And now you can maybe go the whole extension. Hold the navel in, go slow and steady. If you wanted to add power, you would only be on the way up. And go slow and steady down. We're using our shoulder a lot, a little bit on the side, but a lot on the right. Our tricep, that's this part of the upper arm. And 
We're using the top of our chest a bit and our abdominals. That's a lot of hard work. So let's release the tension. Take that off. And try it on the left. So we've got equal length of tube. Stepping on it. Bringing the tubes to the inside of the leg. I should have used a contrasting color. Sorry about that. And bring it close to your body. Imagine that curtain here. Put those glasses of water on your shoulder. Imaginary, obviously. And see how it feels to push as you pull your navel in and slowly, only through your safe, comfortable range of motion, rotate your torso. You can follow your eyes and follow your hands. That's a good practice. But do look at your wrist. Make sure your wrist is straight. Excellent. Now, again, if you wanted to regress this, you're just going to go up with power and a little further, but down with control. If you wanted to regress it and make it easier, that's fine. You drop one half of the hand, uh, one of the handles and just push or reduce the range of motion. Those are two ways to make it easier. How are you doing? Before you get out of this thing, make sure you take the tension off your tube. And we're going to do an exercise, another diagonal with the ball. Take your time. This is a very small range of motion, so be mindful to breathe because we know if you hold your breath while doing isometric or small ranges of motions, then it raises our blood pressure unnecessarily, perhaps dangerously. We're not going to do that. So, bring your legs together. Put the ball up on top. I like to call these thinker abdominal exercises. So, I'm going to show you from the front, and then I'm going to show you from the side. So you stay facing front. Placing your forearms near the elbow joint on the ball. Don't let your shoulders hunch. That doesn't even look good. That doesn't feel good either. So keep the shoulders down. And we're going to shorten our abdominals like a, an accordion as we push that ball down. Exhale as you squish that ball. Inhale. Exhale. Pull the navel in. Think about how your abdominals shorten to do this move. Keep going. Do your best. Keep going. I'm going to show you what I'm doing from the side. It might give you a better idea. Breathing. Do your best. And then take a rest. Stay where you're at, I'm going to face you again. Let's add a slight diagonal to this. Or a loop chopper. Take your time. I'm going to take my forearms and kind of crisscross so that the ball doesn't squirt away. And I'm going to try pushing down and adding a little rotation to strengthen the obliques. Don't poke yourself in the eye. Think of flattening your abdomen and pulling the navel in like you're zipping up tight pants. When you exhale, squeeze the air out of the ball. That's one direction. We're going to finish off with the other direction. So X marks the spot. If you don't feel comfortable doing this one, don't do it. You can go back and try the exercises from last week. Ideally, we're doing good, safe, and effective strength exercise three days a week. But we know with two days a week, we're still going to make some great progress. All right. Wow. I made my ball a little hot. <laughs> we're going to tuck this away. Get a sip of water. And transition to some a little bit of standing exercises. We're going to try that tightrope again, and I'm going to show you from the side so you can see what I'm doing. If you don't feel safe doing it, just 
Go. And then we're going to do some couple standing stretches. Then we're going to come back to the chair and relax, unwind, lengthen our stronger muscles that we strengthen, and relax. On a scale of one being super, super tight and inflexible, very, very, um, you know, achy and tight, and 10 being very, very flexible or super limber, how are you feeling right now? Hopefully a little bit better than when we started. I bet you do. And if you were going to rank your mood from one, being, oh, I feel terrible, down in the dumps, and 10 being, oh, I feel like I'm on cloud nine. Wait, cloud 10. Exercise can improve your mood just like that also. Those are the two most immediate effects you get from exercise. Um, the others are, they take a while. Like strength, like your squats. Do your heels in if you want to try our balancing act one more time. Do your heels in, squeeze your hips forward. If you feel dizzy or you're not up for this part of it, stay seated and follow along in your chair. So, I'm going to imagine a tightrope here behind my chair. Use my best posture. And I'm going to start about an arm's length away from my chair so I can take maybe two to four steps this time and still touch my chair. And we're just going to use our peripheral vision and our hand so we can check our balance. We also can step off of the tightrope. That's how we can check our balance safely. So, if you feel safe, let's do our tightrope walk. Toe to heel, looking off into the distance, using our best posture, lifting that front toe. I only feel safe to go one more step because then I've run out of, I can't see the chair. So I'm going to step off or dismount, stick the landing, and try it the other way. This is our last tight row balancing act. Best posture. Able to see and touch the chair. Here we go. Look off into the horizon. Better days ahead. When you can't touch the chair, you've reached the end of your personal balance beam. And there you are. I think you're a 10 and not on the perceived exertion chart. <laughs> All right, let's do a couple of um, standing stretches. These calf muscles get very tight. And um, so one good way to stretch them is to face a wall and incrementally walk your foot back, keeping your normal neutral stance to a point where you can pace the heel on the ground Keep the knee straight but not locked and lean forward. We can hold this wall up together while we stretch our calves. I don't know, give it 30 seconds at least. More if you like. And then ease out of that. And try the other leg. Little, little tiny steps back. Keep the toe pointing straight ahead. Pace the heel on the ground. Lean a little. Giving a nice stretch to your Achilles tendon and your calf muscles. Breathe, relax. Ease out of it. One other standing hip exercise would be for the ITV. This is a long, strong, tin, tin, uh, kind of like beef jerky, tenderness, um, band of muscles and connective tissues. So if you're standing and pushing into your hip a little, you could stretch the side of the hip and that band that connects way down here. If you feel comfortable, you can take your other foot over and stretch through your torso. If you've been out walking a lot and you have a little pain on the outside of the knee, 
from the friction of that tight band. This is a stretch that could help you. Icing also helps. So, standing tall, pushing into that other hip. That might be enough for you right there, but if, if you want, if you feel stable and nothing hurts, you can cross over and stretch. This is a good time to return to our chair. Last chance to do one or maybe 10 squats with me today. Because today, well, today is now. <laughs> Yesterday, the past, is history. Tomorrow, the future is a mystery, but today is the present, and it's a gift you get to give yourself to be present and be patient, be strong, stay connected, stay tuned to this channel. Ooh. Okay, we're going to stretch a bit. Now that we're seated, Near the edge of our chair, we can stretch out our leg just like we did in the beginning. But in the beginning, we were probably not as warm and not as flexible. If you're having trouble getting motivated, support your body to exercise. Remind yourself you always feel better after just a little bit of movement. And that truly is a gift that you give yourself. Self-care at this time is so important can't help others unless you take good care of yourself. Okay, let's get the left side. Slow your breath by breathing through your nose. If that nasal passages permit. And relax as you support your spine on that other side. Relax. You can rest your arm down here on your leg. Lift your toes up to the sky. Lengthen your tailbone back as if you're a bird showing off your tail feathers this spring. I've been hearing the birds a lot in my yard. Okay, sitting tall. Let's get the quadriceps and the hip flexors stretched out because they're kind of a notoriously tight muscle group. If you turn on the side, have that left hip a little off of the front edge of the chair and take your time to coax and ease that leg back only as far as it feels comfortable to you. I'm going to sit tall, sit with it, breathe in through your nose, fill your belly, your ribs, and your chest, and lift your body up. Let the knee drift down. If it's comfortable, you can even open to a slight arch. If it hurts, don't do it. And then exhale when you're ready, at your own pace, leaning kind of toward your chair back. Take a deep breath here. And ease out of that. Ooh, good. We're going to do the other side, but let's sneak in a little cow, cat, chest opener and closer. Breathe in, fill your lungs from the top to the bottom, lifting your heart, lifting your spirits, and then exhale when you're ready. Curl your spine, tucking your chin to your chest. Ooh, that felt good. Let's get that other hip. Good. 
if it feels good. If it doesn't, don't do it. Exhale and lean, stretching through the side of your torso towards your chair back. Enjoy a deep breath, knowing that each time you take a deep breath, you're bringing that life-saving, energizing oxygen to every cell of your body. That's amazing. We're going to do one more cow cat and get a little trapezius or neck stretch. Be gentle. Sitting at the edge of your chair, sit tall and breathe in, filling your belly and your ribs and then your chest. So your lungs are amazing and they get more amazing with exercise. Exhale. Now let your arms drift down to a point here on your chair where you can gently latch just the edges of your fingers gently around the part of the chair. Inhale, lengthen your body. Keep it long and strong. And just lean a bit forward without tilting your chair off the legs. And you'll feel a gentle stretch. We're going to breathe. Inhale as you let that ear lower to your chest. Exhale, stay here and breathe in. At your own pace and enjoy a nice stretch on those muscles on the side of your neck that support your head. They tend to carry a lot of stress. Relax, deep breath, lengthening the spine. And then exhale. When you're ready, tilting your left ear towards your left shoulder. Stay here for a breath. As you fill your lungs and expand the chest, you can feel that stretch develop. I hope. All right, we're going to sit back in our chair and support our spine. And just do a little bit of breathing and relaxation. Last week, we took a virtual vacation, went to our happy place, our peaceful place. This week, I want you to just focus on now. We can be more effective in our lives if we focus on now, the present, and we focus on how and not worry about whether we're going to be able to do it or not. We have to focus on how to do it. Best. So clear your mind of any other thoughts, and I want you to think now about breathing. How can you breathe the best? I'm going to suggest sitting back in your chair, resting your hands on your lap so you take a load off of these shoulders. Maybe put your hands together, finger pads together. Lower your gaze and close your eyes. And through your nose if you can. Like you're smelling your favorite flower blooming. And exhale as if you're blowing the fluff off an old dandelion. With each inhale, focus on bringing that fresh, energizing oxygen to the bottommost part of your lungs, filling them from the bottom to the top. Going at your own pace. With each exhale, focus on letting the lungs deflate naturally from the top to the bottom. And just notice what you notice as you release any stress or tension you may have in your body, in your mind, or on your spirit right now.
keep your eyes closed if you want, keep breathing. But I wanted to remind you of a few things here before we go. Um, so the number one thing I want to remind you about is to just keep it safe and simple. Kiss. So we want all of our practices to reduce any risks and increase benefits. Keep moving. Keep up the good social distancing for the greater good and for your own good. By the time this show airs, we will have multiple cases of COVID-19 in our village. We already know of one today as I'm recording this. But it's everywhere and we all have to be safe and practice good um, mask wearing, glove wearing, whenever we must go out for essential things. And if we're in our own safe space, our home or our yard with the people that we interact with, just keep washing your hands frequently. Try not to touch your face. This is the time to double down on our efforts because it's working, just like exercise. If we keep at it and we go at a safe pace and, and the Risks are low, the benefits increase. So together, we are flattening the curve. We can do it together. Um, it's just going to be a little while. And um, just know that we are stronger together. So keep up the good work. And keep moving. I miss you guys. Bye for now.